Kiva Go. What are your thoughts on Australia's census showing Scientology has lost a third of its members in that country over the last decade? Is it faster than you expected? Is there anything David Miscavige can do to slow or even reverse this declining membership trend? Factually, no, I'm not really surprised at all that a third of uh, Australia's membership has, has gone away uh, in terms of census counts. And I think that's very telling, actually, because I uh, you know, heard about this a few days ago and there were some comments made, I think this was on Tony's blog, The Underground Bunker, and um, and a, 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 you know a good intelligent commenter over there was was suggesting that this not be taken as a um, picture of what's happening around the world, but I can't really help but apply at least to the United States that same decline in membership. I think that I think that, that is what's happening over the last ten you know ten or fifteen years or so. Um, certainly would not surprise me at all to see the same thing reflected here in the U.S. I um, don't necessarily apply that to uh, Russia or third world, you know, Thailand, Asia, those countries. I'm not so sure that they've had a declining membership. I really don't know anything about the membership in those countries. But I know in the Western countries, in Europe and, and the UK and the United States, Australia, Canada, um, maybe maybe Latin America, don't really know. I can't, I can't really speak intelligently about, about Scientology membership down there. But I think in those other places I was talking about, it's definitely been on a decline from every indicator that we have. Um, and I say that because, uh, one, the exposure uh, from, you know, Anonymous in 2008 forward, all the books and media and uh, everything that's happened to bring Scientology into the public eye and show its abuses for what they are and show that it's not just some kooky, cult or, or belief system that celebrities get involved in, but it's actually something dangerous and something that should be avoided. Um, there's that part of it. And there's also within the church, uh, I've been paying a lot of attention over the last few years to the fact that they have been circling the wagons with the loss of members and have been increasing and tightening their grip and the draconian ethics controls that they use on people to keep them in line, keep them off the internet, keep them from talking to people like me or watching my videos or even watch, you know, watching Leah's show, watching Going Clear documentary, reading any of these books. The church is absolutely paranoid about any of their members doing anything like that. And they are coming down hard on people who they even suspect are connected to, you know, us suppressive people. And, and, and I think they're having a hard time keeping that bubble world intact. Uh, I think the real world keeps creeping in on it and uh, it's causing them a lot of trouble and it's causing people to, you know, to take off, to leave. So, um, so I, I don't have any, any problem with, uh, with those census figures or, or looking at those elsewhere. Now, as far as how could they prevent it, well, the, besides the draconian measures they're taking, uh, which kind of, you know, work, uh, like, like, of course they're gonna do that because it's in their DNA to do so. So the things that they should be doing in order to prevent that, they're never gonna be able to do, and that is to, uh, to chill out, to give people more freedom of thought and more ability to choose and also then demonstrate that uh, that what is being said about the church is, it, you know, if they want to say that what I'm saying and Leah's saying and other people are saying are, is not true, then they need to demonstrate that. And of course they can't because what we're saying is true. What, what you know, disconnection and the harsh conditions that go on in the Sea Org and all that stuff, that's, that's all true. And it remains true to this day. So if they wanted to counter that, they'd have to change the way they operate, and they and they really should be doing that. If they wanted to keep the membership and grow the membership, then they would need to get rid of the Office of Special Affairs, cancel disconnection, and really put the brunt of emphasis on their services, on um, on their lower level services, not their higher confidential expensive services, right? Because the lower level services tend to be more common sense uh, approach and oriented and can be somewhat helpful in certain circumstances, right? Uh, and by those, I'm talking about their classes, like their, you know, parenting class or their communications class or something like this, you know, they could, they could deliver those things and they're not really like too harmful and too outrageous, but, um, 
you know, but like Aaron and I have talked about recently and as I've said on this channel, when you, as you go and progress upwards and go higher and higher in their hierarchy of services, the more uh, crazy making the services become and the worse things get. So, uh, so if they really concentrated on the lower level stuff, then they could increase their membership and, and stop, you know, just just utterly stop with all the Xenu stuff, you know. So anyway, that's kind of in a nutshell. I could obviously talk about this for a long time, but that's, um, that's what I, I generally think on this.